Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Miriam and I talk about all kinds of quilting and sewing related things here on YouTube. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. And instead of a tutorial, I'm going to give you my top 10 game changing products that have really helped me um, in my quilting making journey that have really made a huge difference in the overall experience of quilting and just helping me make the best quilts that I can make. All of the items mentioned today are going to be linked in the description box below. So if you want to go check them out, you certainly can. I will have everything listed down there for you to peruse. The first item that I'm going to talk about is nothing new that I haven't talked about before, but maybe you're new to this. But um, whenever I'm quilting, I <laughs> usually mention this item. But first, we're going to talk about the Hira marker. Oh, look at that. I'm so, I'm so professional. I didn't get that. Could you try again? My Siri on my watch thinks I'm talking to it. I'm not talking to you. Awkward. <laughs> this is a Hira marker. Are you going to focus? Please focus. There we go. So this is a Hira marker. It is by the brand Clover. It is made from plastic. And what it does is it creates a little crease with this little kind of bill shaped edge. It's very thin. I don't know if it's going to focus on that, but it's very thin and it works really great to make creases. Now, why is this important for quilting? So if you want to do especially straight line quilting, you have a few options. You can use tape to mark out your lines. You can use a marking pen or you can use the Hira marker. The Hira marker presses down into the fabric and leaves a nice little crease and that you can then follow with your needle and make beautiful, intricate, straight line quilting designs. I love it. It's one of my favorite types of quilting is straight line quilting. Number one, because it's simple. Number two, it's very modern and clean looking. It just looks really nice. And number three, I love the feel of straight line quilting. It just gives the quilt top a really nice um, texture. And I really like it. That is number one on my list, the hair marker. This is always in my toolkit for quilting. It is definitely one of my favorite products ever made. The next product we're going to talk about is Elmer's School Glue. Yeah. What do I use Elmer's school glue for? I use it for quilt basting. Now, I know um, a lot of quilters like to use spray basting, which is a, a, a spray adhesive glue. My problem with that stuff is it's extremely messy. It gets everywhere. It's very sticky and it reeks. <laughs> I just despise the smell. It gives me an awful headache. I've tried it multiple times and each time I've tried it, it's just, it's awful. I actually had to have someone else spray based a quilt for me before because I just couldn't handle the stink. I personally do not recommend spray based, especially if you're sensitive to smells or if you're prone to headaches or migraines. Spray basting is not worth it. Elmer's glue can do the exact same thing. And you could literally eat this stuff and it doesn't do anything to you. I wouldn't recommend eating Elmer's glue, but you know, we know kids eat it. We know if all of us are honest as kids, we, we tried a little bit of the Elmer's glue. Okay. It's, and that's okay. It's okay. But, uh, so with my experimentation with using Elmer's for quilt basting, I first used it mixed with water. So I used hot water and then I'd add some glue and then I shook it up really well and then had it in a spray bottle and I sprayed it using it as a spray adhesive. So this worked but it was a very weak hold. It had a very weak stickiness obviously because it's watered down Elmer's glue. <laughs> also it would make the quilt very wet and I didn't really like that. I didn't like the idea of the batting staying wet for a long period of time because you know, there could potentially be mold that could grow or some kind of 
organism. I just didn't like that. And it, um, it just wasn't the best choice. So then I thought, well, why not just try just straight Elmer's glue and see how that worked. And I did, and I have not gone back. This is what I use for a lot of my basting. Uh, a lot of my larger quilts, I will mix using Elmer's glue and just my regular pin basting method. Um, so, cause I like to have the, the option to be able to kind of shift the quilt top a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll glue baste the backing to the batting and then I pin baste the quilt top. And that method works really well for me. If you would like a video where I show you exactly how I baste a larger quilt, let me know in the comments below and I would, I would be happy to show you. I actually have a quilt top that I could show you how to do that. So I could do that here pretty quick. But Elmer's glue, don't poo poo it. It works really great. It also can work for different things like uh, gluing down your binding when you're, you're binding your quilt. If you're hand sewing the binding down. I know a lot of people use Elmer's glue for that. You can also use it for different block piecing. So Elmer's glue is really great. Our next item is something that I've used since the beginning, and that is Mary Ellen's Best Press Spray. So this spray helps press out difficult creases, um, and it really helps with pressing seams. So if you have seams that are some seams that are a little difficult, that for some reason just are not wanting to be pressed, they're not wanting to stay down, give it a little a little spritz of the best press spray and they'll lay nice and flat and I really love this spray so I recommend it. I also have the lavender flavored kind, flavored, <laughs> the lavender scented kind. Um, if you are sensitive to smells or if you're not really a huge fan of lavender, I would not recommend this. I, I don't really like the scent, honestly. It kind of reminds me of like um, Tidy Cat's kitty litter smell, <laughs> which, you know, isn't my favorite smell. But I use it because I bought it and I don't like to be wasteful. So I still use it, but I'm not a fan of the smell. So if you don't like that kind of scent, lavender -y smell, don't get the lavender smell. Get the, the scent free. Scent free works great and it actually is scent free. There's no smell to it. While we are on the topic of pressing and ironing, I'd like to talk about my Beliso mini iron. Now, this mini iron has been my go to iron ever since I got it, which was last November. Got it for my birthday. Basically, it has a temperature dial where you can switch up the temperature. It's got some little steam buttons. So this this does have steam to it. A lot of mini irons don't have steam, but this one does. It's also quite large for a mini iron. Um, I mean, I have, I have good sized hands and it's about the same size as my hand. So this works really well. I love it. It is not plugged in by the way. <laughs> so this, um, it's the M2 Pro Mini Project Iron, and I use it for everything. It's got a really nice ergonomic handle. You kind of hold it like that while you're pressing. Uh, this helps a lot. I struggle with some arthritis and a little carpal tunnel pain. So if you're stuck pressing a bunch of blocks that you just made or pressing an entire quilt top, getting it ready for basting, I really recommend something like this. The iron part might be a little bit smaller. It might take a little bit longer to press an entire quilt top, but this handle really has been a game changer for me. I don't have a hand pain anymore when I'm ironing. I have a, um, a full size Rowenta iron that I was using before and my hand would just start aching after maybe five, 10 minutes of ironing. And this I can iron for a solid half hour and not have hand pain. So that's a really big deal. Highly recommend this iron. It's wonderful. This will definitely be linked in the description box below. And uh, yeah, I love this iron. The next product I'm going to talk about is a little, a little not 100% sewing related, but again, with comfort, it is a game changer. So my table is a tall table. I can stand at it. But if I'm standing for long periods of time, whether I'm sewing, 
or if I'm cutting, getting ready for a quilt, I, my feet can hurt. <laughs> okay. Standing for long periods of time is not very fun. So what I got was a floor mat. So these floor mats are nice and they're like a sturdy, rubbery, foamy texture. And I got a nice thick one. I actually found this one at Costco. So you, if you live near Costco, go check them out. Because this one was only like $15. A lot of times they're very expensive. Even like on Amazon, that size mat would probably be at least 50 bucks, I would think. So I will try to find one similar to this one and link it in the description box. But yeah, that's really helped. I don't have foot pain. I don't have ankle pain. I'm standing on that thing. So highly recommend a floor mat if you're going to be doing a lot of standing. So when I'm not standing, I'm sitting. <laughs> so and the the chair that I got is it's another game changer. I am telling you, this chair has been um, extremely comfortable to sit in, especially when you're sitting for long hours sewing. It was also very important for me to find something obviously that could fit on a tall table. So I started looking for what's called a drafting chair, which is a taller chair. You know, I kind of looked at bar stools, but bar stools are not comfortable. I actually used to use a bar stool with this table and it was it was not comfortable to sit in. I had an extra cushion added to it and stuff, but it just was not um wasn't working. So I knew I wanted to invest in something that was going to work really well for me something that I'm going to have for years. And I found this one on Amazon, actually. It is a great chair. And right now it's being occupied. <laughs> so if we could just pan down. Oh my goodness. Have you ever seen such a cute little kitty cat? And she's not going to want to get up. Huh, Kimmy? So cute. This chair, it's basically like an office chair, but it's tall. So it's got a nice large seat that I really like. I sit very comfortably on it. It's got an ergonomic back. I'll turn it around here so you can see. So it's got a really nice curve to it. Just kind of naturally fits the curve of your back. It's also got adjustable armrests that are very nice. So if I want kind of a little bit of support, like when I'm quilting, I can move them up a little bit. Or if I'm piecing and I want them kind of out of the way. <laughs> You're being a scene stealer, baby girl. She's only a little dramatic. So I really like that. It's also got, you can adjust the height quite a bit. And um, yeah, you can adjust the tilt of the seat. There's all kinds of adjustments on this. I really love this chair. The great part about this chair is the company that makes this chair also makes a regular height office chair that has the exact same seat and back and everything. Everything's the same except the height. The height isn't tall, it's short. So I'm actually going to link that one in the description box as well. And it's it's a pretty affordable chair. It's a couple hundred dollars, but it's something that you're going to have for years, you know, and it's very comfortable. I would not be recommending a chair unless I 100% stood behind it. <laughs> Honestly, I would not be uh, recommending one because chair is very important. You want your back to be supported and your hips to be supported, especially when you're quilting because you do sit for a long time when you're quilting and it's very important to have that support. So I very much recommend this chair and I think Kimmy recommends it as well. So there, Kimmy stamp of approval. <laughs> Another product that I definitely recommend is the Juki TL 2010Q. Now I have done an extensive review of this machine, which I will link up in the cards up here, or maybe it's over on the other side, but I will link it in the cards and then also down in the description box below. If you're interested in this machine, I go through all of the pros and cons of this machine. I'm very honest in my review of it, but this machine really has been a game changer for me. I have been able to quilt large quilts easily with this, with both straight line quilting and free motion quilting. And uh, I just, I love this machine. I've had it for about five years 
and I plan on having it for, you know, five, 10 years more, probably longer than that. And it, it works beautifully. I've never had issues with it. And it's great for quilt piecing, quilting, binding. The entire quilting process can be done on this machine. And I love that. Definitely recommend the Juki TL 2010Q for beginner quilters or more experienced quilters. And I know a lot of quilters do have this machine or another Juki that's very similar to this. So yeah, if you are interested in getting a machine, I would highly recommend the Juki. So you know what sewing machine I use and a lot of the products that I like to use, but what do I use to actually design my quilts? That is an excellent question. I use Electric Quilt Company's Electric Quilt 8 quilting software. Um, this is normally called EQ8. If you hear quilters just throwing it out there, oh, I designed this on EQ8. This is what they're talking about. This software is available on PC and Mac. I use it on a MacBook and it works great on the Mac. I've had no issues with that. This software is completely a game changer, especially if you want to design your own quilts, if you want to be a quilt pattern designer, or if you just like playing around with quilt design. I mean, for fun, I am 100% honest, you guys, for fun, sometimes I just go in, throw together some blocks, and then just start plugging in fabrics because it's just fun. It's like a coloring book. <laughs> So this software has hundreds of quilt blocks that are license free, which means you can use them in your quilt pattern designs if you want to go that route. And there's all kinds of blocks. There's traditionally pieced blocks. There's foundation pieced blocks. There's applique. There's so much in this software, just in the software by itself or the electric quilt company also has all kinds of add-ons that you can add to the software. So I got the Block Base Plus add-on, which literally has, thou thou is it thousands? At least a thousand. Um, I'm looking, I have the book that goes along with it. Let me just grab that here real quick. How many quilt blocks are in here? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's 4,000 plus blocks in the Block Base Plus add-on. This is the book that goes along with that. It's the Encyclopedia of Pieced Quilt Blocks by Barbara Brackman. This is really cool too. Um, I recently got this not that long ago, but this is a really cool book. Um, you can flip through it and it's just kind of like, I mean, 4,000 plus quilt blocks in here that uh, you can look at and it gives their name and I think a lot of times she tried to figure out kind of when they were first published in magazines or books and things, newspapers. So this is a really cool resource. And all of the blocks in here also are license free. So you can use these in your quilt pattern design, which is really cool. So I plan on doing several videos um, on EQ8. I would like to show you what this is capable of. I've even thought about creating kind of an online course type thing where I teach you how to use this for a beginner, start to finish, how to design a quilt in there. So if that's something you're interested in, click that subscribe button because I will definitely be releasing some videos on this and then hopefully later on a course on how to go through this and I try to break it down so it's easy for anyone to understand because I know it's kind of difficult to try to figure out software on your own, which is what I did <laughs> because I couldn't find anyone really teaching how to use it. Electric Quilt Company has some videos available that you can watch, but sometimes I need things described to me a little bit differently. So EQ8, huge game changer. I used this a lot when I was making custom quilts and I'm using it. This is how I design my quilt patterns. And it's how I design pretty much any kind of quilt project that I'm making. I use it to figure out fabric requirements and measurements and sizes of pieces for blocks. It's just, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much a priceless resource for me now. So I love this software. <laughs>
All right, EQ8 was number eight. Now on to number nine, quality fabrics. Now, I, this is kind of a hot topic. I know I am not the quilting police. I am not someone to say poo poo Joanne Fabrics, poo poo Hobby Lobby. You know, I'm not one to do that. However, if you are creating a quilt that you want to last, lots of washes and for many years decades down the line i really think it is important to invest in higher quality fabrics now if you're making something small or something that you know is not going to need to last for you know decades or anything hobby lobby joanne fabrics fabric is totally fine to use i use it i i am i have prepped fabric for a tutorial that I'm going to be shooting for this week with fabric that I bought from Hobby Lobby, okay? Because I do have really good prices at Hobby Lobby on fabric, and they have really cute fabric. I'm not going to poo-poo their fabric, but would I choose to use Hobby Lobby fabric for a quilt that I'm making for a family member that I want them to have for a really long time? Probably not. I would invest that extra money and it's really not that much more money when you think about it into something that's going to last a long time quality designer fabrics i hate using that term because it just sounds snobby it it just does but it's the fact of the matter these companies have way better quality fabrics okay and they have fabric designers. I know some fabric designers and they're wonderful people. I'm not going to poo 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 anybody. So except the quilting snobs who are mean. I don't like hearing when people are mean to other people that just don't know. Or you know, if they can't afford the fancy fabric, they shouldn't be made to feel bad because they're not willing to shell out that extra money. I just, I don't understand the rudeness. You're not going to get that here ever from me. Some of the companies that I really like their fabric, I've used, I know they work and they last and they look rich and beautiful even after several washes are Moda Fabrics, Riley Blake Designs, Art Gallery, Free Spirit. Um, let's see. I know I use Kona Solids. Robert Kaufman Kona. I don't know who makes that fabric. That might be Moda as well. Kona is my personal favorite solid fabric. If you don't like Kona, that's fine. <laughs> There's all kinds of solid fabrics out there. A place, a really good resource to find quality fabrics is the Fat Quarter Shop. I'm actually an affiliate for them. If you would like to use my link to order some fabric or some other notions from them, I would greatly appreciate it. It's no extra cost for you, but it will kind of help me out, give me a little kickback so I can keep making these videos and, and things like that. So um, Fat Quarter Shop is an excellent place to find good quality fabrics. I really like their fabric selection. They have a lot of beautiful designers on there and they a lot of times they have really great sales as well. So it's a really good place to keep an eye out for sales. So the Fat Quarter Shop, their shop will be linked down in the description box below. All right, we've made it to number 10. Are you ready? <laughs> so my last game-changing product, it's not really a product. It is a mindset shift, and that is to ignore perfectionism. I know a lot of people getting into quilting, you think that everything has to be perfect. Every seam has to be perfect. Every block has to be perfect. You know, <laughs> there's the notorious quilting police that are out there and quilting snobs that are, you know, just not very nice. And that's unfortunate that that is the case. But I hear that from so many people that, you know, I tried to go in this Facebook group and ask questions and I was basically attacked and told, no, you idiot, this is how you do it. And I just... I will never understand why people are like that. So something that I did was I decided not to, I decided not to be a perfectionist 
when it came to making quilts. I was making custom quilts for people. A lot of the stuff that I was making was very sentimental to the people that I was making quilts for. These were memory quilts made from, you know, deceased family members, clothing, their babies, you know, onesies, things that cannot be replaced. So the perfectionism was way high, way high, because I did not want to ruin anything. You know, that really, that can really take the joy out of the quilt making process and kind of zap your creativity because you're just so focused on making things perfect. So, and that's just not at its core for me, that's not what quilting is. Quilting is not perfection. And I don't think it should be. I don't think anyone should feel pressured that they need to have things be perfect like that. I just, if you can tell, I don't like it. I don't like when people are treated poorly because, you know, they're not doing something the way that someone else thinks they should be doing it, basically. You know, this is quilt making. It's cutting fabric and then sewing it back together. It's not, you're not saving lives. You know, no one's life is on the line with how someone's piecing a quilt block, okay? It's just, <laughs> it's just the fact. But yeah, that's the last thing that really was a game changer for me was to just switch my mindset on whether my quilt blocks had to be perfect, you know? And my quilts are beautiful. I make beautiful, wonderful, one-of-a-kind quilts that no one else makes. And that is really cool to know. You know, so the way that you make it might be a little bit different than when I make it. And I'm okay with that. Okay? So that's very, very important to me. And that's something that I, I wish for everyone, especially beginners getting into quilting, Please know that not everybody is going to be judgmental about how you're doing stuff. If you don't know how to do something, feel free to ask. I am here to help. I'm here to nurture and guide and help people making quilts. I don't want anyone to feel like they can't ask how to do something. Or if there's a tutorial, a specific tutorial that you're like, I don't know how to do this. How do you do this? Let me know. Send me a comment. Send me a DM on Instagram. You can email me. There's lots of ways to reach out. So just thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. Remember, all of these things that we talked about today are going to be linked down in the description box below. And I very much appreciate you uh, stopping by and watching the video. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them in the description box below. Do you have a favorite? game-changing product that you would like to share with everyone, leave it in the description box below. I'd love to do a follow-up on this, maybe of products that other people say are, you know, game-changers. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye. I just realized that I went through half of the items on this list, and my microphone wasn't on. Do you know what that means? That means it did not pick up any of what I was saying. <laughs> so now I have to re-record re it. <sighs> oh, well. Technology. Yay! <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Give it a little spread. <laughs> Express.